The Blackmagic A10 Mini makes it super easy to create multi-camera live streams, podcasts, Zoom calls, and more. But what about your audio? What if you wanted to take the A10 one step further by attempting to connect the Rodecaster Pro? And this is very important because your audio is half of your video, if not more. So the ATEM helps everything to look really good and have all these different angles, but the Rodecaster can then help that sound really good as well. And there are two different ways that you can go about using the Rodecaster and the ATEM simultaneously, so I'll cover both of those. They each have their pros and cons, and I'll definitely let you know which one I prefer to use. The first one is to connect physically the Rodecaster to the ATEM, and there are a few different ways you can do that. The easiest way is to use just a TRS cable, connect it to the headphone output on the front of the Rodecaster, and then connect the other end into the microphone input on the back of the ATEM. Then all you need to do is turn on microphone one or two, whichever one you connected it to, and that's it. Now you've got the audio from the Rodecaster running into the ATEM. Couple of warnings here though. On the ATEM, you don't have any audio meters, so you do have audio up and down, which means you're going to have to monitor your audio. If you're using something like OBS, that makes it very easy. If you're using something like Zoom, it's a little more difficult, so that's just gonna be up to you to, to manage. And as far as the Rodecaster goes, it's important to remember that regardless of where your sliders are, since you're using the headphone output, it's that headphone control that's really going to affect the output volume that the ATEM Mini receives. So you're gonna have to dial in between your microphone input, your headphone output, and the microphone input over here, what sounds good for you and how you use it. And then you just need to hop in your software and select your audio and your video sources. So this is Zoom. I'm just gonna go into Zoom preferences. And for video, I'm going to click on the Blackmagic Design A10 Mini. That's, I have a camera set up over here, hello, to show that. And then for audio, we're gonna select the Blackmagic design also. So that way the Blackmagic is doing our audio and our video. The benefit to this is that it only takes one USB port on your computer because both things are going in together. So it takes up fewer ports on your computer. That could be really important depending on import and depending on how you have your setup and what other peripherals you have connected, how many ports your computer has in the first place, all those different variables. And when it comes to OBS, it's kind of the same process, really. We've got the ATEM Mini selected as our video source. Hello. And we just need to add in the ATEM also as an audio source. So we can click the plus, do audio input. We'll call this ATEM audio. And then we'll select Blackmagic Design from the input and click OK. So now, as you can see, though, this audio is bright red. It's way just too strong the signal. So I can adjust that by either turning down the headphone jack on the Rodecaster Pro, or I can also adjust the volume control on the ATEM Mini itself to turn that down. And basically any other software, if you're using something like StreamYard or Ecamm or FaceTime or Skype, any of those things, they basically let you select your video and your audio sources separately. And you would just select both of those as the ATEM Mini because it's processing both. Now this isn't the only way to connect the Rodecaster to the ATEM Mini. If you wanna use this front headphone output for your actual headphones, you can also connect it using one of the outputs in the back of the Rodecaster. Now those are quarter inch outputs, so you will need an adapter to make your cable fit, or you will need a cable that is quarter inch to 3.5 millimeters and that works as well too. Now here's another variable to consider. The Rodecaster Pro has incredible mic preamps. I've talked about this in previous videos. They're very quiet and they're very powerful and they work terrific. What it doesn't have though is a really great headphone preamp. So if you're using the Rodecaster, sometimes you'll notice there's hiss in your headphones that doesn't end up on the final recording. So that's usually not a problem because the final recording sounds better than what you're hearing. But if you're using that output for the ATEM, that does mean that some of that noise could carry over to the ATEM, to your stream, your meeting, your class, whatever you're teaching. So one way around that would be to use a cable like this, which has two mono quarter inch jacks on one end, and then a stereo 3.5 millimeter connector on the other end. And then you connect this to the two left and right monitor outputs and the 3.5 millimeter part 
to the mic input on the ATEM Mini. And I'll leave a link to this exact cable in the description if you're interested. The reason this is a little bit better is because these monitor outputs are tied directly to the mic preamps. So you don't have to worry about any of these dials up here, whatever your sliders are at, whatever your broadcast meters are at here, that's the signal that's carrying over into the ATEM Mini. And now there is one more way that you can connect your Rodecaster to the ATEM Mini, and it is actually the way that I prefer. And it doesn't involve using any of these cables, it involves just using a USB-C cable. I have gotten much better results by connecting the Rodecaster directly to my computer and the ATEM directly to my computer. And then kind of like I said before, you know, I'm using Zoom as the example. If I go into preferences, now for video, I can select the ATEM Mini, the Blackmagic device. And then in audio, I will select the Rodecaster Pro. And now the Rodecaster is taking care of all the audio. The ATEM is taking care of all the video and they will just work together. The biggest question I get about this though is how to handle syncing of the audio and the video. And my answer is, I don't know. I wish I had a better answer for you. Truthfully, it hasn't been an issue for me. In my Zoom calls, my live streams, the podcast that Heather and I do every week, it's been fine. I feel like there's some black magic taking place in here. I've used that joke before, but it's true. That makes these things just sort of match up. The only software that I've had any kind of syncing issues with is OBS. And then in OBS, you just need to select your Rodecaster as your audio input. And then you might need to click the little gear and click on advanced audio properties where you can play with this sync offset. And you probably need to do like a negative number, like negative 500, negative 700. I don't have a specific number because honestly, there have been times, I don't really use OBS at home that much just because it's too like fiddly as they say, but I do use it at work quite a bit. And there have been times where I've spent quite a bit of my day getting OBS to sync perfectly. And then the very next day on the exact same setup, it's out of sync again. Personally, and this is just my opinion, I think a lot of it has to do with your computer's processing power and how it's just handling audio, what other apps you have, how powerful your computer is. Because one thing I have noticed is if I use studio mode when I stream on OBS, a lot of times my FPS, my frames per second will drop down to like 10 or 12. And then if I just click out of studio mo mode and use like regular switcher mode, the frame rate can jump up easily to 60 FPS if that's what I have it set at. Right now it's at 2398 because that's what the camera's actually filming in. So I don't know for sure. I'm not an engineer on that kind of thing, but I think that that might affect the delay, which just means if you're using OBS, you might want to check your sync every time before you start streaming or start recording. When it comes to other apps like Zoom or StreamYard or Ecamm, I haven't had any issues. They just seem to automatically sync up, at least with this setup of MacBook Pro, ATEM Mini, Rodecaster Pro. It's also worth noting that the ATEM software will allow you to add an audio delay if you click on the audio tab and then under the mic one and mic two inputs for the ATEM Mini, you can click this little option right here and it will bring up a mic input settings panel, which includes a delay and the number of frames that you can delay it. And then this will add an audio delay to the video before the information goes to whatever streaming software you're using. But just like with OBS, it's gonna be up to you to play around with the settings to figure out what works best with your specific setup. And just for the sake of clarity, I am using the Rodecaster Pro with the ATEM Mini, but you can use any 3.5 millimeter audio input. That could just be a microphone, that could be a totally different mixer. It doesn't have to be the Rodecaster Pro. Same thing goes with using it as a second USB input. That could be any other mixer that offers USB functionality. That could be just a USB microphone like a Blue Yeti or a Rode NT-USB, anything like that. And you can still select your separate audio and video sources in whichever software you're using. And that's really the key because that's going to help everything you make, your streams, your podcasts, your classes, your meetings, whatever it is, your recordings look a lot better because do you know what you get when you combine a great audio source with a great video source? you get a great video. There's no joke, it's just, it's what you get. You get a great video because you have good audio and you have good video and it's, it's just a great video.